Have you ever taken apart a gadget and noticed that thin green board covered in copper lines, silver dots, and tiny components? That's a printed circuit board, or PCB, and it's the unsung hero inside almost every electronic device you use, from smartphones to cars, medical devices to satellites. But have you ever wondered how these intricate, precise boards are actually made? Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating process of how a printed circuit board comes to life. From a digital design to a fully assembled, electrically functional board ready to power your favorite devices, right here on History of Simple Things. Everything begins with a design. Engineers and PCB designers use specialized software like Eagle, Altium Designer, or KiCad to lay out the blueprint for the board. This involves creating a schematic diagram, which maps out all the electrical connections between components. Once the schematic is finalized, it's translated into a PCB layout. This layout determines exactly where each trace, pad, hole, and component will go on the board. The designer must ensure that not only do all the connections make sense electrically, but that they also fit physically within the space constraints of the final product. Layers are defined. Many PCBs are multi-layered, sometimes with four, six, or even more internal layers, each carrying signals, power, or ground connections. Once the design is complete, it's exported into a format called Gerber files, which are used by PCB manufacturers to start the actual fabrication process. The physical manufacturing starts with the base material of the PCB, called the substrate. Most commonly, this is a fiberglass reinforced epoxy laminate, typically FR4. It provides the rigid, insulating body of the board. Onto this, a thin layer of copper foil is bonded to one or both sides, depending on whether the board is single-sided or double-sided. For multi-layer boards, multiple layers of copper-clad substrates are stacked and laminated together. The copper is usually very thin, measured in ounces per square foot, and will eventually form the conductive pathways of the PCB. Once the copper is laminated, the next step is transferring the circuit pattern onto the copper. First, a photosensitive film called photoresist is applied to the copper surface. Then, using a technique similar to photography, the board is exposed to ultraviolet light through a film mask of the circuit pattern. Where the UV light hits, it hardens the photoresist. The unhardened parts are then washed away with a developer solution leaving behind the exact pattern of the circuitry. The board is then subjected to an etching solution, commonly ferric chloride or ammonium per sulfate, which dissolves the exposed copper areas, leaving only the desired copper traces protected by the photoresist. After etching, the hardened photoresist is stripped away, revealing the finished copper circuit. Now that the traces are defined, the next crucial step is drilling holes in the board. These holes, called vias, will later allow components to be mounted and electrical connections to pass between layers. Precision drilling machines, usually CNC controlled, are used to drill holes as small as a fraction of a millimeter in diameter. For multi-layer boards, the walls of these holes must be plated with copper to connect inner layers. To achieve this, the board is cleaned and then placed in a chemical bath that deposits a thin layer of copper inside the holes through a process called electroless plating. This forms the crucial interconnections between layers. With the copper circuitry and plated holes in place, it's time to apply the solder mask. This is the green, or sometimes other colored coating you typically see on PCBs. It's a protective layer that insulates the copper traces, 
and prevent short circuits during soldering. Like the photoresis process, the solder mask is applied as a liquid or film, exposed to UV light through a mask, and developed to leave openings only where solder will be applied, usually on pads where components will be mounted. Once cured, the board moves to the silk screening stage. This is where the white letters, numbers, and symbols are printed on the board to indicate component labels, part numbers, and other useful information. It's not electrically functional, but it's critical for assembly and troubleshooting. Before components can be added, the exposed copper pads need to be protected and prepared to accept solder. This is where surface finishes come in. Common finishes include hot air solder leveling, electroless nickel immersion gold, and organic solderability preservative. Each has its pros and cons depending on cost, performance, and application. The chosen finish is applied to all exposed pads, ensuring good solderability and long-term protection against corrosion. Once the bare PCB is complete, it's time for assembly, adding the actual components to turn the board into a functioning circuit. There are two main types of components, through hole and surface mount. Surface mount devices or SMDs are the most common in modern electronics. Assembly begins with a machine applying solder paste to the pads using a stencil. Then pick and place machines rapidly place components onto the paste covered pads. The board is then heated in a reflow oven, melting the solder paste and bonding the components to the board. Through hole components, if needed, are usually inserted manually or by machine and soldered using wave soldering or selective soldering methods. After assembly, the boards are rigorously tested to ensure they work as intended. Automated Optical Inspection or AOI systems scan each board to check for missing or misaligned components, soldering defects, and other issues. In-circuit testing and functional testing follow, where probes or test rigs apply signals and measure outputs to confirm correct electrical behavior. Some advanced boards are even x-rayed to check for hidden defects under components like BGAs. Any faulty boards are either reworked or discarded depending on severity and cost. And there you have it, a printed circuit board starting as a blank sheet of fiberglass and copper, transformed through an intricate multi-step process into the foundation of modern electronics. It's a blend of chemistry, engineering and precision automation all working together to make the devices we rely on every day possible. Next time you look at a circuit board, you'll know just how much technology and craftsmanship lies beneath that glossy green surface. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.